Hey guys, how's it going? It's going off grid. And today I'm going to show you a little plug I made here, which you can plug two heaters into, two 1500 watt heaters. They've got to be non digital. And you can make yourself a little soft starting uh, contraption with it. So, what you got here is you got your input power from your inverter, and then you have your output power to your appliance. And that goes, so the hot line of your input power goes through into the, your one hot line of your plug. So you got to have multiple plugs on either a splitter of some sort or a power bar. So this goes into the hot line. And then you can plug two heaters into this uh, splitter or up to three heaters depending on the wattage of your inverter. So this is a 1500 watt inverter. So this requires two 1500 watt heaters. If this was 3000 watts, you would want three um, 1500 watt heaters at least. And then out the neutral side, you go to your output power and that would just connect either to the neutral, uh, yeah, to the neutral. And then the other line would be to hot or vice versa. You only got two lines. One's gotta be the neutral, one's gotta be the hot. There's no ground. This is just, uh, this is for an inverter. Most inverters don't have, like, portable inverters like this. They don't have a proper grounding uh, way to ground them anyways. So, if I plug this into the inverter directly, okay, I'm going to shut it off. And I turn it on, this is what it does. So it tries to start it for a split second, but then it completely shuts off. We'll try it one more time. And no, nothing. Gotta be careful because I only got a 60, 60 amp fuse here. She's gonna blow. So, if we plug this in, now this is only a 1500 watt power bright. This inverter is incapable of starting that uh, compressor. And it's it's really cold in here as well. So, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna plug this into the inverter. Now, this is still not going to start the, the uh, compressor because this thing just does not have enough power. It would require a third heater uh, as a resistive source on this plug, but we're going to try it again. Did you hear that? It, it tries and it keeps trying. Oh, almost. It, and the inverter doesn't give out. That's the nice thing. So this is... I'll show you on the inverter. So it's limiting the current on the inverter to this. So this is volts, we'll go to watts. Here we go. Oh, we got 1760 watts. So we're limiting, this can do surges up to 1800 watts. So I'm gonna keep letting the air out. Oh, there's no air to be let out, but it's, this is one of the hardest compressors to start that I own. The pancake uh, style compressors, they start much easier, so this would start that. But it won't quite start. But it's just a, an easy concept that these are the resistors, they're 1500 watts each. When I turn that on, the fans do come on, so it's not like the, the heating elements aren't going to get hot, it still has a fan cooling it. And it's just an idea for somebody that has an inverter. They have something that the inverter will not start. This is just uh, something you could try. It's fairly cheap. Like each end was like three dollars. This is three bucks, three bucks, and I think this was like maybe five or six dollars. And you need some wire. That's it. I soldered the wire to just the plug ends, the the neutral and the live, and that's it. It's just a. Uh, it, it does solve some problems. It won't solve every problem, but Anyways, you can try it if you want. I do not recommend anything that has a digital screen being plugged to the output of this because what this allows is the voltage to droop down to a point where the inverter can cope and still run. So if you had anything digital like a TV or something plugged to this side and when you started the compressor, uh, the TV would shut off, it, it could get damaged or anything like that. Anyways, we'll do some more testing and see what this thing uh, is capable of running now versus not being able to run before. Okay, now we added this belt sander. It's got a variable speed right here. 
I have it on the lowest setting, so it'll provide a bit of an extra surge if this can handle it. And we're going to try starting the compressor again. Did that work? It's plugged in, but it's not doing anything. So, maybe i got to turn this up. Okay, so that's on the highest setting now. Let's see if it does anything this time. Let's move this so we can see the screen. Come on. There we go. Is that even hooked up? What's going on here? I'm going to shut the heaters off and see if this even spins at all. So that's off. That's off. So it should be just that or the compressor is going to run. Oh! I don't have the... I don't have uh, this depressed. That's my problem. Okay, so back to minimum. So I have it locked to on. We're going to turn the two heaters back up to high. And let's see how this does this time. Still nothing. Okay. So this is still locked on. We're going to turn this to high. Because it, it, this is only getting a very low voltage. Let's see what happens this time. It, this almost started. Oh boy. How many watts is that pushing, I wonder? Let's go to the inverter part. 18 hundred. Eighteen hundred and eighty watts. Let's get about this added about two hundred extra watts. So with eighteen hundred and eighty watts, this compressor still will not start. Oh boy, what else do we gotta add? How's a sixty amp fuse doing? It does have a little bit of a uh, it takes a little while for it to blow. It's not a quick blow, or not super fast anyways. And we also have twenty amps going into there from the power supply. But dang, I'm surprised. That didn't, still doesn't want to start. There's no air in it. It's actually slowing down. I wonder if the temperature is getting too cold. Okay, so I warmed up the compressor a little bit. It's, it's quite cold in here. So, we're going to try this again. Exact same setup. Let's see if it starts. Still doesn't start. Wow. The exact same as before. These are both full, completely on. Okay. We need a, a bigger load. Okay. So I added a sawzall. I got the lock on. We got the sander lock on. We got the two heaters. This is all acting as our resistive loads. Those two are constant resistive loads. These ones provide a surge when they first start. Uh, and then the re resistive load tapers down. So far, we have not been able to start this thing. If I had, I wish I had another one of those heaters. Because I could at least put it at low or high or something to figure it out. Where the max is, but here we go. See if she starts. Oh, almost. This is kind of scary over here. Here we go. And we overloaded the inverter. So we got to the point where the inverter can only surge for a few minutes. Or a few seconds, I mean. And does it turn back on? Yes, it does. So it's not blown. I don't think even with a soft start that this inverter can start this compressor. This compressor just requires more than 1800 watts. I'm sure this has a quick little surge. It is just incapable. Now, I'm going to have to try this again with the, the reliable 3000 watt because in this cold weather, the reliable 3000 watt cannot start this either. The 12 volt model, this is also a 12 volt model. The 48 volt model might be able to start it, but I'm not sure. So, I'm going to have to make another video and test the reliable for, uh, 3000 watt. And I'm going to do this same setup. Maybe I'll try and find another heater because... This, I don't think this is uh, capable. This just does not have quite enough power. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Great. So, I decided I'm going to do another test with another inverter. This is a 3,000 watt 
power jack inverter, as you can see right here. It is not 3000 watts. It's actually quite a terrible inverter. I do not recommend it. You can do more like 1000 watts, and at 1000 watts, it does not have a clean sine wave. At 500 watts, it has a clean sine wave. So I consider this more or less a 500 watt inverter, but it is split phase. So you get one leg at 120, another leg at 120, and if you combine them, you get 240. So it is kind of a cool inverter because it has that. So it is, it can do on this side, which is 110 volts, it can do 500 watts. On this side, 120 volts, it can do 500 watts. And if you really push it before the inverter uh, fails or, or conks out, it does about 1500 to 1600, 1700 watts. But the sine wave is complete square wave at that point. It's not even close to a sine wave. This is paired with uh, 3200 watts of uh, battery, so 3.2 kilowatts. This is the charger. It goes through that uh, box step, I mean the step down converter there. And it's got a BMS on this battery here. And it has a BMS on that battery there. So they're, they're two separate batteries. Uh, just in, in parallel with each other. This is a 24 volt system. And I just spray foamed it everywhere, glued it all together. And then I close it. And then it's waterproof. Uh, these are outdoor rated, I believe. And if they're not, it doesn't matter. They're cheap. I can replace them fairly easily. Because uh, I do use this outside. So let's turn this on. And we're going to give the two... It's, I'm just going to use just the heaters as a resist of load uh, with this. Because they provide about 1,780 watts of resist of load. Which is more than this inverter can handle. Okay, so the only thing I didn't really think of well is... The switch on the inverter, it's not super, super easy to get at. you got to open the lid. So it's closed. we got 120 volts. Switch it to watts. Now, we're going to try running these tools on just the inverter first. We're not going to plug it into here and see if they work. All right. So we're going to try this first. This has quite a big set uh, surge. and see what it does here. There's volts again. Let's go watts. Ah, it has a soft start. So this shuts completely down. Let's try the sozzle next. Sozzle's right here. Yeah, it's got a soft start. Okay, so that's no good. That does not work. Oh, I can't see watch anyways. I'm not even plugged into it. So let's try with my uh, resistive load. See if it does the same thing. Because obviously there's a surge there that the inverter does not like. Yeah, I'll pause you guys. All right, here's a sawzall first. Look at that. About 730 watts. Let's go volts. I want to see what the volts sag to. Not bad. It does overshoot in voltage though. Okay. So, it, it feels the same, more or less, except for the volts don't drop to a point where the meter shuts off. So, that's pretty cool. It prevents the soft starting of the inverter. That's dim, though. So, this is right close to the inverter's max power, is these two fans here. Let's try something else. Okay, so we got this router here. It's got a pretty good surge. See if we can start this. Ah, it's, it cut out for a second. Okay, so it did cut out. Oh, the bearings don't like this cold. So we're gonna plug this into my little resistive load. Okay, so we're plugged into the resistive load. We're on here, and if I turn it on, no problem. Now the cool thing about this is if this inverter couldn't handle it, you could turn this to low. Now you just turn the resistance down. Now it took less power, you could turn this completely off. Now this will start up even slower. As you can see, then you can turn this to low. 
And I'll start even slower than that. And you can hear the difference when I turn these up. So you even get a little bit of variable speed with these heaters. And if I had a third heater, which I wish I had, you could control it even more. But these, these uh, two are more than enough for this little inverter. So that prevents the inverter from cutting out. So that's pretty cool. Let's see if we can find something else here. We got this small compound mater saw. This is a Mastercraft. We got it plugged in. And let's see if it starts it. It does start it, but it takes a few tries. One, two, third time it starts. So let's plug it into the resistive load here. 